I'm Helen Hong, co-host of the trivia podcast, Go Fact Yourself. Join us Saturday, August 17th at the Crawford in Pasadena with guests Taryn Killam from SNL and comedian Jen Kober. Tickets at las.com slash go fact yourself. On Imperfect Paradise, why we villainize coyotes. They are smart and cunning. They are bold and fearless. And what we actually know about coyotes may surprise you. Listen to Imperfect Paradise wherever you listen to podcasts. Today on the LA Report, the land in a part of Rancho Palos Verdes is slipping more than a foot a week. The latest on city efforts to ID unsafe homes. I'll tell you about intense weather forecast for over the next few days, from a heat wave to potential hail. And a new secondhand store sources its goods from a unique place, turning trash into treasure in Riverside. It's Thursday, August 1st. I'm Julia Paskin, and this is the LA Report from LAist 89.3. Homes in the Portuguese Bend area of Rancho Palos Verdes must now undergo inspections to determine if they need to be red-tagged. City officials say those inspections are mandatory because of the unprecedented land movement on the peninsula. Alayist reporter Yusra Farzan has been following this and joins us now. So Yusra, how will the inspections work? So starting today, inspectors will drive around looking at homes for angled doors, foundation cracks, damaged roofs, and any other signs of property damage from the land movement. Of course, the area has been dealing with an unprecedented movement as much as 13 inches a week. Homeowners should expect a letter to schedule inspections and you'll have 10 days to do so. Otherwise, the city says they'll issue an inspection warrant to go in and evaluate the property and determine if it needs to be yellow or red tagged. Okay, so what happens if your home is yellow or red tagged? So city officials say if a home is yellow tagged, they will work with the homeowner to show up the house um, to prevent it from getting red tagged. But if the house is red tagged, unfortunately, you won't be able to live in it anymore. Um, And the city is currently looking into federal and state resources um, for those who do receive this evaluation. Wow. We've been reporting on this for a while, but, but please remind us what brought this on. How did we get to such a severe place? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the land is quite literally sliding at a concerning rate of around 13 inches per week, according to the city geologist. Um, And it's brought a lot of problems for people there. Um, So road damage, beach closures and gas shutoffs, the list goes on. But Wednesday night, officials say they are worried about safety. Firefighters are worried they won't be able to enter some properties as fast as they'd like in emergency situations because of how extensive the damage has been. Um, And I've been able to see some of that damage when reporting in these neighborhoods um, where residents have shown me foundational cracks in their properties. In some cases, their garages and guest houses are so badly damaged, you can't enter. That's LAist reporter Yusra Farazan. You can read her reporting on how the landslide complex in Rancho Palos Verdes is affecting residents on LAist.com. There is a small chance of thunderstorms beginning tonight through the rest of the weekend. Ariel Cohen is a forecaster with the National Weather Service and says there is also a small chance of rain. What's unique is that we're going to get storms not only impacting areas of the high country, but we're also looking at slight chances around 20 percent all the way to the coastal portions of L.A. County, Ventura County, even Santa Barbara County, south of Point Conception. Those chances of thunderstorms will begin pushing north and out of the region by Monday morning. High weekend temperatures are expected to begin Saturday and may kick off another heat wave in to most of next week. And speaking of, that leads to an excessive heat watch for the interior parts of Southern California, including the Coachella Valley, Saturday morning lasting into Sunday evening. Temperatures could reach up to 117 degrees, so the National Weather Service is advising people in that area to drink plenty of fluids. Stay out of the sun. Coming up in a moment, how billions of dollars could flow into schools for repairs and new buildings. We'll tell you about the caveat. 
Hi, I'm Helen Hong. And I'm J.K. Van Stratton. And we host Go Fact Yourself, the comedy trivia podcast, soon to be a radio show, right here on LAS 89.3. We're recording live on Saturday, August 17th at 7 p.m. at the Crawford in Pasadena. Our special guests are Taryn Killam from Saturday Night Live and comedian Jen Cover. It's a trivia show like no other. Get tickets now at LAist.com slash Go Fact Yourself. Hi, this is Larry Mantle. And I'm Desmond Mantle, his son. Together, we have a new podcast, Passing the Mantle. I grew up listening to my dad host AirTalk, and now I get to sit down with him in the studio to talk about what inspires us and makes us curious. We'll dive into societal trends and how they've changed over generations. Discussing it all through the lens of father and son. Join us. Listen to Passing the Mantle wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back to the L.A. Report. I'm Julia Paskin. There will be a $10 billion bond to repair and build schools on the ballot in November, but local districts cannot access that money unless they raise matching funds. Mariana Dale reports. Dozens of classrooms in the Linwood Unified School District leaked during this winter's storms. Superintendent Gudiel Crosswaite says there's an urgent need for repairs. We have aging facilities that date back to the 1920s. And we are constantly trying to catch up and do the best to make sure that our students have safe, clean facilities at the very minimum. The school district will ask local voters to approve an $80 million bond this fall. Districts have until August 9th to file their own funding measures to the county registrar. I'm Mariana Dale. In other news, more than 30,000 people are living without shelter in Los Angeles. The city's last official count found that number dropped during the first year of Mayor Karen Bass's administration. But we want to hear from you about what you are seeing in your neighborhood. We have a new survey you can fill out to tell us more. LA's senior reporter Nick Gerda explains. We really wanted to get a sense of how people are feeling about how it's going in their neighborhoods and how that compares with these point-in-time count uh, numbers showing the drop. We wanted to see if people's um, experience is reflected. That. You can find the survey at LAist.com. And once again, California sea lions have started showing up sick and stranded in L.A. County. Wildlife rescuers believe demoic acid poisoning caused by harmful algal blooms is to blame. A facility serving Ventura and Santa Barbara counties has been inundated with more than 100 reports each day. They've also been seen in Malibu. If you come across a sick sea lion, keep your distance and you can call the Marine Mammal Care Center for help. Now, you've definitely heard about thrift shopping, but what about finding dirt cheap deals at a landfill? McKenna Sievertson has more on Riverside County's new secondhand store. Looking for a new bike? You can find all shapes and sizes for just $6 at the Lamb Canyon Landfill's new shop. What about a washer and dryer? You can take home a working set for just 20 bucks. The store is now inviting shoppers to give these secondhand items a new lease on life on the last Saturday of every month. The ultimate goal is to educate people about where their garbage really goes once it leaves the curb, but also to save precious landfill space for future generations. And who knows, one person's trash might be your next household treasure. For LAist, I'm McKenna Sievertson. Thanks for listening to The L.A. Report. I'm Julia Paskin. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Sharon McNary is in for Austin Cross to bring you The L.A. Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujie. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Melhouse is our director of content development. Our engineer is Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The LA Report is made possible by listeners like you. That's why we ask you to donate at LAist.com slash join so we can keep the LA Report and trusted local journalism coming your way every day. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live.
L.A. is done show and tell. Present an evening with David Sedaris. The humorist, comedian, author, and radio contributor will take the stage at the United Theater on Broadway to share insights, read from both published and unpublished work, and host a live Q&A with the audience, followed by a book signing. It's Saturday, November 16th at the United Theater. Tickets and information at las.com slash events.